today I'm going to review the HRV4 training app. Um, it's an app that uses your heart rate variability um, to give you measures of fitness and things like that along with your workouts. It combines it all into one. Um, it's an app that's available on iTunes and Android. It's $10, so you pay one fee, and it gives you a bunch of statistics. So today we're going to talk about, I'm going to show you what this app looks like. So I'm going to go into it. The first thing that you see is you see today. And what happens is you can actually go in and measure your heart rate variability, and it gives you a, a score for each day. Um, positive means that you know the longer it's taking and negative means it's negative. Um, so basically what's happening is you're gonna read what your HRV is for the day. You can do that multiple ways. You can use a chest strap. You can use your finger on the camera of the phone. So you can actually just use the phone to do this and it pretty much is the same as I compared it with my chest strap and it's pretty much even whether I'm using the camera or the chest strap and you can also use an Apple watch if you have one um, so for me I'm actually just putting my Apple watch on now and just recording my HRV that way um, but you're gonna click read for health and I've already taken a measurement today so it's kind of reading mine but you can enter in what your quality of sleep is if you trained you can enter in your TSS um, from training peaks um, and it reads your data from Strava to see if you've worked out that day or not. I'm actually recovering um, from some hip bursitis, so I did not train yesterday, so I don't have any data enter in here. But you would just enter in your TSS number, and that's what they use to track your fitness. And then there's a bunch of statistics, you, things you can enter in, you know, uh, like how hard did you train, you know, what was... You know, how motivated are you to train today? What's your physical condition, mental en energy? You know, all the basic things that a lot of the fitness programs ask you to measure. Um, how is your current lifestyle? Are you travel? Are you sick? Um, are you stressed out? Um, but for me, the, the things that I find are very useful in this part of the app is A, entering in my TSS, how hard my workout was, the amount of effort between zero and 10, um, and then my quality of sleep. So those are the things that I find are the uh, most, you know, important. And then what I do is I actually look at what my HRV is. Um, I take a look and I see where am I falling. As you can see on the screen here, I'm pretty much right in the middle. Um, and I did report being sick. I actually meant to put that I was injured, but that's okay. It doesn't really make a difference because um, I don't use those statistics in the app. So it's okay for me. I'm not going to really go back and change that. I care about my HRV. So you can see I'm right in the middle, which is good. That means middle or positive for me is usually good. I can see how I'm feeling. Um, and then what you can do is you can actually go into the app and you can see your history, which is going to show you your workouts for the last week. Um, it's going to show you your recovery points, which is really showing you your HRV measured with each, each of the workouts. And you can look at your heart rate and see. And you can see how things like sleep, energy, or soreness really affected you. You can see today my heart rate was up. So you can see what your heart rate was for the last few days. You can go to your baseline and this is where you can measure things like you know what is your actual hrv doing per day you can see some days on mine it was up whether it was not you can see what kind of workout they're um, saying you had whether it's easy average or intense and that's so that you can track your workouts and see how your hrv is affected by them and then you can also look at your heart rate each of those days and then you can do a population comparison, which, which lets you compare yourself to men or women or certain ages based on your heart rate to kind of see where does my resting heart rate fall. One of the things I found with this, you know, my resting heart rate is like, you know, 51 to 53. I'm always awake when I'm using the app, so it's showing my heart rate, my resting heart rate average is 58 beats per minute. That's because I'm awake when I'm using the app, and usually I, I moved around a little bit. Even though I do it first thing in the morning, I still am kind of up. Um, so my heart rate, so this isn't 100% accurate about what my resting heart rate is. I almost wish it measured it from my watch to see what it was continuously throughout the day. Um, but you can see it compares you to other people. So I don't find the comparison very accurate because everyone's measuring it at different times. I know people that use this app, they're standing, they do it mid-morning, sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes at night. So it's not necessarily accurate for that. Um, but 
Then we go to our insights. This is where we can see our data. So if I click training load, for example, I can compare and see this is CTL, ATL, and form just like training peaks, similar to Strava's fitness and freshness, Golden Cheetah um, also uses the same thing as training peaks. So you can see, and this is where I'm entering in my TSS, and I can compare this to a number of things. I use TSS, or you can also use, you know, I prefer relative effort, um, or but you can look at just your power, intensity, or anything. I prefer TSS because I'm entering in my TSS from Training Peaks. I can see what my fitness has done. I can see my readiness to perform. I can see, you know, my and my injury risk. So I'm always looking for that. I'm always trying to stay in the yellow and green, you know, to make sure that I'm, you know, not at high risk. And you can see here at some points I was when I was really ramping up my workouts. But you can see what your ATL and CTL are based on. And you can look at one year out, four months, six months, and kind of pick. I have it set at two months for now. I can look at various correlations like heart rate and sleep quality is one that I like to look at because um, I can see what's happening. And it also, the one thing I like about the app is they do tell you what each of these things mean. Um, I can look at acute HRV changes, look at like, you know, is how is my heart rate affecting my HRV, my resting heart rate? Um, I do like looking at my HRV trends, my baseline, heart rate baseline, and if I click on one of these, it tells me what's happening and what it could potentially mean. Um, but it also has my training load and tells me how I'm handling my training based on my TSS and heart rate variability, which I like. Gives you a VO2 max estimate. Um, I find this is very accurate compared to everything else that I'm using that gives me my VO2 max, like my Garmin watch and stuff like that. Um, it gives you weekly and mon monthly summaries, and I have this based on TSS so I can see what weeks I've been training hard, not training hard, see if I've went down or not. Um, trailer Training polarization is whether you're training high or low intensity, and it shows you, you know, the whole month, the last 30 days. Um, have I been training a lot? too intense, not intense. So you can see in some of this information they're giving to you several times, which is good. And then lactate threshold, which is simply um, how what pace you can hold for like about eight to nine miles. Um, it gives you a number and you have to, if, so for each of these, like in order to get these stats, like to get my HRV trend. So when you first start using the app, it doesn't just give you all this information right away. It takes about a month before any of these are even populated. So like when I first start using the app, my HRV trends, there's nothing there. It's just blank. It takes about 30 days before it starts tracking you because it needs to learn your patterns, which I wish it did it right away, but I understand why it can't because it needs that data in the background. Um, and then, you know, there's lots of resources. I actually find the websites very comprehensive, lots of explanations of what each of these things are. Um, and then there's HRV Training Pro, which is something for the uh, computer. Um, I did do a trial of the HRV Pro just to test it out. Um, I think for someone like me just doing training individually, it's not very useful for me to have this data on the computer. I have it all on the app that didn't really offer me anything more. Um, but I think for someone using a coach and having other people look at their data and analyzing it, that's where I think Ant Training Pro really would be beneficial for them because other people could go in, see what you're doing, how you're doing, and a coach could use that information to help plan your workouts. Um, as far as settings, um, this is really how do you want to scan? Do you want to use a heart rate strap, watch? What are you going to use? And then you can actually, you can configure your tags. You can edit edit your personal data, like your height, weight, all that kind of information. And then you can see where it links to it. Links I have it linked to Apple Health, Strava, Training Peaks, and Final Surge. Um, but it does link to other things as well. Um, so that is nice to be able to link to all those things. So it automatically is importing your data. The one thing I did wish it do is I wish it just imported your TSS from Training Peaks. So like in the morning, when I calculate my HRV, I have to go into Training Peaks, see what my TSS was, and then go in the app and entered it in. So that is one thing I wish that it would pull from. Um, and then I can export my data if I want to export it somewhere. Um, you know, I know that it's one person developing this app from what I can tell. I've had to email the author several times. He seems very responsive. Um, uh, you know, and the app seems to be updated all the time. Uh, the website's really comprehensive. The author has done uh, 
you know, research on the app. He has research studies published, does have a PhD in the field and is, you know, actively really working on this a lot. So overall, I'm really happy with the app. I think it's well worth $10. It offers a lot of stuff for $10 that other apps charge or apps or applications charge a lot of money for some of the same information and this one's using hrv which i really really like as you know a measurement for myself so this is my main app that i'm using for my fitness and my vo2 max and things like that because i'm using it all the time even though i have access to you know strava's fitness and freshness and i have access to training peaks tss data fitness there i'm really using this app over them and it's only ten dollars so i i really you know recommend giving it a shot I think it does a really good job and I just constantly I've been using this app for a year now and I'm constantly seeing improvements in it you know which I like so you know I would definitely recommend it definitely worth checking out definitely worth the ten dollars especially for anyone who works out thank you